Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daily Damn Blog. Happy Halloween season now. Today we're taking a look at something really cool. Does anybody out there know who Bob Hope is? Bob Hope is an entertainer from the 50s and 60s. A famous entertainer who made lots of movies with Bing Cosby. I recommend you Google them, check them out, if you don't know who Bob Hope is. He was a staple in American comedy for years. This comic book is The Adventures of Bob Hope. It come out in 1967. What's a year during the Bob Hope in his comic book series ever October and November for years? And years and years that this series come out always did Halloween issues. And since it's the Halloween season and it's not quite time for gory monster stuff yet, let's do some comedy. Let's check out Bob Hope, The Adventures of Bob Hope, number 106 from 1967, a 12-cent comic, but out actually by DC, a big company. And... A familiar face. I like Bob Hope. I remember him well. I used to watch him in them Bean Cosby movies. So let's bust open the Bob Hope and see what Bob Hope comic books in 1967 was like. God darn! Back in 1967, you could win a Gemini space capsule and have it at your house and fly yes into space. What the heck? That's a Mandela effect. I've never heard of that in my whole freaking life. Ah! I was only three when this came out, so maybe it was defunct by the time I had got to reading comic books. It's so great to have a comic book to come out when I was three. So Bob Hope's the director. Bob Hope's making a movie. Bob Hope has whooped out the Monster Squad. That's right, he's got him some guys he calls the Groovy Ghoulies, and he's going to make him a horror movie. So in full, beautiful panels, well-drawn comic book with big, thick pages and that wonderful old comic book smell that I like. And I'm digging the art in this book. These is some wonderful art. As he has his group of these young kids who's helping him make the movie, he's teaching them, he's training them. He's got real monsters in his movie. Well, this is a real thing. Oh, my God. Ah. So we got real monsters, we got fake monsters, we got actors, we got people learning, we got up the skirt shots. What? Oh, Bob Hope's a dirty man. Huh? Real monsters, huh? Yeah, I kind of dig Bob Hope. He was always a little bit on the deviated side, I suppose. Check out that art. Sheena of the Jungle just showed up. And Grandpa Monster has been giving a little advice to the other vampires in this Bob Hope comic book from 1967. Wow. That's pretty cool. I didn't think Grandma, Grandpa Munster in there to give his actor playing Dracula some advice. And then we get some commercials. Dive into an underwater world of action with G.I. Joe the Frogman. I actually had this set in 1970-something. It was a hand-me-down from one of my older brothers. So Grandpa Munster fills in the actor on how to play a good Dracula. But I think he gave him a little bit too much advice, and he had him running around with a sword and acting like Errol Flynn. You know who Errol Flynn is? You may have to Google that one, too. And the guy playing the mummy just can't seem to get his lines right. As Bob Hope chastises the actor playing Dracula for being a little too... A little too stiff. Is that what he said? Stiff? And then for some reason, this fat guy sniffing this other guy's butt, and I'm not even going to go into all that. Maybe he likes to smell a poot or two. I don't know. But why is this guy kissing this guy's hand? This is 1967 comic book for kids, and I'm just going to skip from here on out to the next page. Oh, my God. So they made a big deal to race to Monster Castle somewhere in... What? Lost... Los Angeles? As they hired this goofy-looking bastard to fly him around. And I tell you what, I wouldn't get in a plane with this guy. Especially not with that big Richie Rich dollar sign on the back. What the hell? And they're in a hurry. Look at it. This guy flies his wooden plane on top of a jet to make time better. And he can get an ad for Spectre Flash Ghost thing that I don't really know what the blue hell that is. Okay, next. Oh, wonderful. Two pages of ads. You get this Capes, hobby, hints thing. And you can slow that down and read it if you want to. I'm not even going to deal with that. And then you get another commercial for something we never heard of. What? I don't even know what the title of The Mystery Dial H thing. I'm going to look for one of them and check that out. And you get Bob's mailbag. He calls it Bob's gag bag. And if you spend time reading this, you will probably gag. 
But I'm up going real slow so that goofy bastard Michael Marone can pause it and read all this stuff. Because Michael Marone, I know you are an OCD anorexic nerd who has to read every little thing. And if I don't put it in here, hey, well, you can pause it and read it. You're going to send me 500 emails telling me about it. Uh, and look, it even got a little Bob autograph on the bottom. That's kind of cool, right? Hey, I could have bought this yesterday, but I didn't. I saw this book, but I didn't want to buy it. It cost too much. It's a big 80-page giant Superman. And I have to admit, I looked through it. It was pretty cool. But the guy wanted like 100 bucks for it. And I just wasn't going to put that into that comic book. Eh, so I passed. And here, and making a special appearance in this comic book, we get Nyx, Queen of Darkness. Hey, Nyx, you made the comic book. You're showing up to give advice to Elvira in drag. Huh? Elvira dressing normal for this one, huh? Is that Elvira? That's Vampira. Okay, I read that wrong. Vampira's dressing normal so she'll fit in on the plane. And she flies with Bob Hope and his wonderful canine who just showed up and decided to talk a little bit. Why? So in full page panels, brought to you by the Daily Land Blog, you get a lot of airplane shenanigans flying upside down, bobbing around, goofy bastards falling out and flapping their arms and trying to fly. And it's just shenanigans. It's the kind of stuff you see in a really wacky comedy movie from the 50s, like The Great Race. And I'm really digging that plane with the dollar signs on it. Later on, they refurbished it and sold it to Richie Rich. Uh, kaboom. Boy, it's like pages and pages of retarded shenanigans. Really goofy stuff here going on. I can't get into this. Oh, my God. And they finally made it to Los Angeles Airport. Look at this pilot with his tongue hanging out all coked up and stuff. Oh, my God. No wonder the plane wound up crashing in a million freaking pieces. Oh, it says crack. Crack. That's what that guy was smoking when he crashed the plane. And in full panels brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog, we try to figure out how come Monster Castle, with the spotlight out front and stuff for filming, is located in Los Angeles, California, because it's on a movie lot, right? This guy played Caesar in the movie. He's going to show up and go, hey, how you doing? I'm still in character. He thinks he's the real Caesar. He's a goof. Anyway, they head out to the character. Little fake Caesar's getting all upset and jumps on bald-headed goof. And after pages and pages and pages, the Groovy Ghoulies, the Monster Squad, finally show up. And then we get ads, ads and more ads for me as guests in the Paradise Park Amusement Park. Yeah, that's right. If you, for 85 cents, you could have went to the Paradise Park and hung out with Superman at the DC Family Fun Fest. Here, back in 19... 19- 67? I think it's over now. Catalog offer of the year. You can send away for this and get some really cool catalogs featuring pictures of boats. I bet my friend the captain would really like that. He's a nautical guy. So as we blaze through the Bob Hope nightmare, Bob Hope giving more direction to the cast. Bob Hope getting all mad at little Caesar guy. Everybody showed up. Don Adams from Get Smart. House from Bonanza, Dean and Jerry and everybody showed up to have dinner with Little Caesar and Bob Hope and the Monster Squad, the Groovy Gillies. And they even got this, they call it a dog, right? Because then it's eating dog food and it's growly. But it's like a little werewolf that walks around on all fours. What is that? Kind of like a baby Bigfoot and Little Caesar. And it's the same size. And they get all happy and run around and play together and scheme. Oh, it gives me a great idea for a movie. Hey, I guess this guy's supposed to be like Mel Brooks, right? Is that true? So in dismal full panels in this Bob Hope nightmare, we continue to the fake-ass castle in Los Angeles where they're filming a movie where Little Caesar rides a dog and whoop de doo Bob Hope thinks that's so amusing. He puts it in his freaking stupid movie. The monsters are getting all dressed up for their big scene. They're going to be the Gill Man and whatever King Kong thing, maybe. I don't know what the hell that's supposed to be. Anyway, they're all dressed up. They're scaring some people. They're making a movie. And real monsters show up. And I guess we know where real monsters got this idea is stolen because this is in 1967 and there's something that looks like that now out that's real popular. So maybe somebody stole that idea. I'm not going to say the name, but in the comments below, if they actually show up, you can say the name. And more shenanigans ensues. Yes, it's true. As the Monster Squad run around and try to film this movie with, with Bob Hope giving them the worst direction in movie history. And they eat up monsters there. Your costumes don't look that real. And he gets all upset. And the guy gets his costume jerked off. And the Black Knight shows up. 
with these big evil eyes looking around because it's a Halloween thing. And they're like, real monsters, what? And then they back down the real monsters and realize they are dealing with some real monsters. These things are real. Bob Hope is astounded as he says, roll the film. And on this page, we get a full page ad for the muscle man. You can take this course. You can build up your muscles. Michael Harper, I bet you wish this was still around, don't you, bye? So the real monsters feel intimidated as Bob Hope commands his little demons to try to grab them so they can put them on film. But they escape, and, and little wolf boy dog thing and his fucking brother are got, like tripping out over his escape. And little Caesar was like, I'm going to put that in my movie, too. And in the last panels of the movie, Little Caesar plans to make his own movie as he takes over with the dog boy and the fake Dracula. Frankenstein and the wolf man and Dracula, the groovy ghoulies, go looking for Bob. And Bob's up here like, I'll see you in the next comic. And we will work this out then. And then you get a commercial for Doom Patrol. I actually picked up a Doom Patrol. I may have to do one of them comics one day. And then you get the direct currents from DC. And I'll once again go real slow. So that goof, Michael Marone, can check it out. Well, you say we uh, do another double feature. I went kind of fast. You was wondering why. Yes, it's true. We're going to do a double feature again. Because I'm trying to get more comic books out. It's true. I want to get them on the wall. And we end up this comic with the usual crap ads. Ah! And whatever the blue hell this is on the back, look at this cool stuff. Now you can be a monster too with these wonderful, really great makeup kits. And that's a new one. I've never seen that one. That is cool. I would have ordered that when I was a kid. And that's my look at the Bob Hope Halloween Special. Number 105. From 1967 with the Groovy Ghoulies, the Monster Squad, right on the cover. Let me know in the comments below what you think. So let's do a double take and check out Bob Hope. From November of 1965. A number, what number is it? What does that say? 95? A number 95 I should have looked before I started the video. Anyway, we get some more groovy monsters dancing around on the front. Because like I said before, he did a Halloween special once a year in the Bob Hope comic book line. I picked up two. And this is a special one. It's from the year I was born. Let's have a look inside real quick. Apparently, G.I. Joe was a big sponsor of Bob Hope in 1965 and 67 because both inside covers have G.I. Joe ads. So in this Bob Hub comic book, not only is he hanging out with really cool monsters from his monster squad, he's got some superhero friends who this, this guy can play a guitar, he can fight, and he can stretch like the plastic man. Wow, that is one cool superhero for Bob Hope and he's talking dog to exploit. And you know Bob, he's a singing and he's a dancing and he's a tripping around. As he plans to look up this superhero guy and exploit him the way he did the monsters. He's even trying to get a hold of that old cowboy dude. Bob Hope falls out. Ah! Boop, 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 boop. Cause Bob Hope was always falling around. This guy threatened to stick a football up his well, never mind. Anyway, Bob Hope's copping deuces. As he tries to talk this cowboy guy into joining up. Well, he's watching him on TV, but he wants him to join up with his little movie coming because Bob Hope makes movies, apparently, in these comic books. So, in full, your Titan panels brought to you by the Daily Damn Blog. Check it out. Bob Hope's making a movie. Bob Hope's recruiting people. Bob Hope's running around in his drawers and underwear with his dog. That is so... It's, ah! And then this young teenage boy that falls in there and hangs out with him uh, apparently is a werewolf and does some turning in the bathroom because Bob Hope's roommate would be a young boy, teenage werewolf. You know, so, you know, sometimes I wonder what they're trying to say in comic books when they make Bob Hope have young boy, teenage friends and companions. I'm just going to skip all that. Anyway, Bob Hope's got the Nightmare Squad, and he's hanging out with the young Charlie's Angels. And this is 30 years before they existed, and they're actually calling them Charlie's Angels. Wow, that's interesting. And here we go with several ads for all the cool stuff. These are some model cars I wish I could add to my collection, like the monster one. You know, I just put a video up on Daddy Dance to Good Stuff. Check out some of my really cool stuff, some of my cool cars and collectibles. And check out what I sent somebody. It's in that video. So, if there's any mistakes or bull in this video, I apologize in advance. As I bring you full panels brought to you by the Daddy Dan Blog, I'm shooting this video in the minute I get done. I'm throwing it straight up on YouTube. I'm not even going to watch it back. So, you'll get to see this chick's booty just like it is. I won't have to reshoot it. Ah! Anyway, that's some good art right there as Vamp Vampira gives some more lessons to the students in these 
Wow. Bob Hope makes movie comic books from the 60s. This one's a 65. The first one I showed you was a 67. I saved this one to last as we watch Vampira give acting lessons to the bikers. Because bikers really need acting lessons. This guy's going to stick a finger on Frankie's head later on and give him the pause. I dare you to put your nose on the dot. Go ahead, put your nose on this dot. Smell it. Ads and ads and goofy ads for this little crap where this guy plays with something. Ah, you can pause it and read it if you want. I'm trying to get through to the good stuff. That's right. Daddy Dan's skipping ads. He's done looked at 15 freaking times before. Part two of him. We get four creepy people. You got to meet the werewolf, the vampire, the Frankenstein, and whatever the blue heck that other thing right here is supposed to be. Ah, baby Bigfoot, I always say. Anyway, there goes Frankenstein making a slam dunk. Are you enjoying these really cool comic books? Do you enjoy Bob Hope? Do you realize I'm just shooting through these because I want to get them done and hang them on the wall? I'm really into the covers, but the comic books are so, so stupid. You know, you got the Bacher guys. You got Frankenstein throwing some guy through a wall with no apparent reason why. But luckily, the guy's a super stretchy hero thing, so it don't hurt him when Frankenstein should have killed him. Dracula's sleeping in a box, and he's supposed to be an actor. I'm an actor who's so into character, I sleep in a coffin and drink your blood. What? And that don't make no sense. Hell, he even has bats. I just I just don't get Bob Hope books. That's right, and Full Dismal Panels brought to you by the Daddy Dan blog. We think we learn that all these actors are so into character, they sleep in coffins, they drink blood. The wolf man never comes out of character, and and this guy's a putz. And he's trying to hit on Vampire, who's always dressing up in disguise because she don't want to look like a vampire evil sucker in these comic books, which don't make no sense because she character is that. Bob Hope has a talking dog, and that's some stupid crap. And it's just, it's just, ah! This book really just, I'll be glad when it's over. Ah, it's true, YouTube. I'll be glad when it's over. Bob Hope looks like he'll be glad when it's over, too, as the dog says. I think you're an idiot, Bob. Anyway, Bob Hope's looking for these guys. He wants to talk to make him making his movie. He wants a superhero guy, but the superhero guy's declining him because he'd rather play guitar and rock it up and be a rock star who can fly, who can stretch, and do all this cool stuff. And then you get this again, and, and oh, my God. Well, you can figure it out, right? More ads for Cheerios. That reminds me of retro cereals. Corn Flake and Honeycomb Hideout Clubs. I tried to join that and PayPal give me such a nightmare. I couldn't do it. I'm about to figure it out. Anyway, you get some Bullwinkle Rocky and an old lady cartoon. And you can pause that and read it if you so desire. And then you get the super hip flips again. Yep, we're going to dig into more. As the super guy from the Bob Hope thing has his own little adventure, apparently. Gun in them. We're going to make the movie. Oh, YouTube, you won't believe this. Now that I'm looking at this guy stretch and all that other stuff, he can transform into giant bottles. He can transform into toasters. He can transform into spray cans and ice cream scoopers and take the bad guys out in all kinds of unique ways. And this just makes me want to. What's the word for it? Uh, what? It's the word for it. That's right. I want to take this one minute to welcome Mella Fella, the Daily Dan's new sponsor, who sent me these beautiful strawberry rings today. 400 milligrams of TAC and goodness. Welcome, Mellow Fella, to the family. Thanks for sponsoring the Daily Dan blog, Mellow Fellow. Mellow Fella. Mellow Fella, I love you. That's right, Daddy Dan just became a Mellow Fella. Welcome to new sponsors. Be sure to check out Mellow Fella, available at a store near you. And here you get an ad for some more crap. App ordered it if you want it to back in 1965. So in full shenanigan panels, Bob Hope making a movie. Bob Hope is tripping. Bob Hope's a hitting on the girls. Bob Hope's trying to get this goof to be in his movie. Bob Hope's tripping down in his underwear and getting his clothes blowed off again because that's what Bob does. Somebody cut a big rank one and run everybody out the building. Oh, that stinks. And the stink apparently had love infections as women and men go wild in an orgy of fun. They must have had some metal, fella. More commercials for what I assume are books a hundred times better than the one I'm looking at now. And you can pause it and check out this if you want to. Michael Marone, you goof. 
So this hero's jamming it up. He's doing his superhero stuff. He's getting Bob's attention. And Bob just showed up with the Groovy Ghoulies. Plus, Vampiro, who has joined the Groovy Ghoulies to hang out with them as they try to make some movies. And Bob Hope's all in shock that they're going to make the movie without his help. So in full panels, brought to you by the Daddy Dan Blog, the guy rocks, the monsters dance. We did the mash. We did a monster mash. Now everything's cool and that's a part of the plan. And the monster mash is the hit of the land. Everybody dances and everybody has a good time. And Full Panels brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog. They all dance to the monster mash. And this comic book wraps it up in the end. With the end. With a big old party. Everybody singing and dancing. And Bob signing people to movie contracts. Bob wins. Here you get some commercials for some books that probably suck. Huh? I don't know. I've never seen them. So if I ever get them, I'll let you know if they suck. A Trix commercial finishes out that page. Oh, my God. Trix are for kids. And then you get Bob's gag bag. And once again, if you take time to read this, you're a Michael Morone OCD kid. Or you're somebody who really wants to gag. Because this makes me want to gag. And then you get the Boys, Girls, Men, and Women Club. And what the heck? And you can pause that crap and read it if you want to from 1965. Uh, and you get a truly awesome back cover to make your own witch come true. Yeah, here comes the bride. Oh, I love this stuff. Classic collector stuff from 1965. It's worth that just for that back cover, wouldn't you say? That's one cool back cover. And that's my double shot of Bob Hope comic books. One from 1967, one from 1965. I hope you enjoyed it. They're DC Classic Originals. They're 12 cent comic books. They're Bob Hope and they're Halloween orientated. You couldn't do better for a Halloween treat and comedy together, right? Next week, I'm going to say something so gory it's going to make all y'all little kids cry. Till next time, this is Danny Staten on the Daddy Dan Blog. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Be sure to join me at 13 o'clock live on the Daddy Dan Blog, Saturday nights after Saturday Night Live for the growing show and some good stuff Bigfoot material. Till next time, blog over, dudes.